What on earth am I doing with this? Would you guys buy this? I bought this piece of junk from a thrift store for $7.99. The cost of used furniture has gone up so much over the last couple of years. Combine that with rising food and housing costs, and the reality is a lot of people cannot afford to buy high quality furniture, even used. I want to show you how you can buy furniture like this, or even get it for free, and turn it into something that looks amazing. This kind of furniture is not going to make you rich from flipping it, but if you're in a bit of a financial pinch, you can still have nice looking furniture with a couple of products and a little bit of time. Stay tuned. My name is Angie and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. I feel like I need to start this video off by saying that this is not typically what I work on. I do love flipping cheaper quality pieces because those are the ones that usually get thrown out. This one is a little on the cheap side for me, but for some people that's going to be all that they can afford. There is no shame in that, we've all been through hard times, but that doesn't mean you can't have nice looking things, even if they don't cost a lot. This is your typical pressed wood and faux printed wood grain piece, probably from the 70s, maybe even the early 80s. Most of the edge banding has come off, there's a big chunk missing out of one side, the bottom shelf is loose, and all three shelves have a slight dip. The only thing that's actual wood on this piece are the legs. So obviously while I'm going to be painting the rest of the piece, I'm going to leave the legs wood but they need some major sprucing up. You can see these metal caps have completely corroded. There is no amount of buffing that will get these back to their original color, so you'll see later how I deal with that. The leg brackets they screw into are quite rusty, and there's a few different ways you can remedy that with products you probably already have in your house. Most of the tools you'll see me use in this, people have around. There are some things I'm using to save a little bit of time, like the impact driver here, but you can just use a regular screwdriver if you don't have a power version. Like I mentioned, this lower shelf isn't attached all that well. It's quite loose. We've got a rogue screw here that just isn't grabbing anymore. And same with the other ones, so I'm actually going to pull them out and I'm going to replace them with longer versions of the same type of screw. I'm going with ones that are a little bit longer so that they will go past the original screw hole and grip into the material below it. And that's all it took to sturdy this up. Given the amount of corrosion on the legs and this little bit of mildew here, my best guess is that this was probably in a basement or a room that didn't have a lot of airflow or maybe even wasn't heated. I'm using just a typical household bleach cleaner to clean this up. It'll do a pretty good job of deodorizing while it cleans and most people have this sort of product in their home anyway. You could also use straight up vinegar. It does a pretty good job of killing mold and mildew spores and also cleans and deodorizes as it dries. Once I have everything cleaned up, it's time to address this great big chunk missing from the side. But the first thing I'm going to do is force some epoxy in there. I'm going to push as much in as I can and clamp it down. And you can see when I push with my finger, there's a little bit of squeeze out. That's a great amount to have in that split. It's going to pop these clamps on. One way you can get rid of rust on things is to boil it actually in a mixture of about 50% vinegar and water. I didn't really have the time to sit and babysit that. So I'm just soaking them in some vinegar overnight. Okay, these legs are so gross. Using that same bleach cleaner, I'm going to scrub them really well before I sand them. I know sometimes for people just starting out, they don't really understand why you need to clean before you sand. Because I mean, you're going to be sanding the finish off anyway. But you really don't want to be grinding any of that filth down into the wood once you get the finish off. It doesn't take long, just give it a clean first. I'm also popping these metal caps off with their pins and I'm going to soak them in the vinegar overnight as well. They're really corroded. I'm not really sure how much I'm going to be able to do for that aside from spray painting them, but we'll see how they look in the morning. 
You are going to see me use my surf prep sander in this a little bit, but I'm still going to show you sanding each of the components of this piece with normal sandpaper. So if you don't have an orbital sander, that's okay, you can hand sand. I am unfortunately usually in a bit of a time crunch, so again, I'm just using some of these power tools to save some time. You can see once the old finish is off, it's not the prettiest grain in the world, but it's still wood grain. I'd still much rather see that than this opaque brown color. So initially I was just going to paint this entire cabinet one color and I still am, but it was at this point I decided I was going to take the backboard off. It's already been cleaned on the inside and I sprayed and cleaned it on the outside. There's a bit of staining there, but that's not a huge deal. What I want to do is show you how to take these off and make a really simple geometric design using just some masking tape. If you're really careful taking these staples off, you can actually reuse them to attach and you won't need to go out and buy new staples or nails. Now, as far as the design goes, you can be as simple or complex as you want to. I'm using two different thicknesses of masking tape. You can use rolls that are thicker than this even, or you can use them all the same thickness. It doesn't really matter. I'm just doing something very random here. And I know these lines look curved here, but I assure you they're straight. The board is a little bit curved here. That's why it looks a little funny. So I'm going to be painting this whole piece in fusion mineral paint in the color eucalyptus. Now the price has gone up a bit since I bought this particular jar. I think it's around $35 Canadian. And this jar could easily paint probably five or six little cabinets this size. So the best way to stretch your money here is to try to pick up a few pieces that you can paint in the same color. Normally when you do something like this, you would want to brush on a clear coat over the taped areas, which would allow the clear coat to kind of seep in under the edges a little bit, and then you put your paint over that, and that will give you super crispy lines. You can do it this way, you just might need a little bit of touching up later. You want your first coat, especially on these laminate pieces, to be very thin, almost scratchy. If you go for full coverage on your first coat, it's not going to adhere all that well. Especially in a situation like this where I wasn't able to scuff sand, because if I'd scuff sanded, you would lose the integrity of the wood grain in the background. So in this case, for adhesion, instead of relying on that scuff sanding, I'm relying on that first coat, which is often called a scratch coat. The thinner it is, the better it's going to adhere, and your subsequent coats are going to be able to stick to that better. Now as far as staining the legs go, you can go out and buy a wood stain, or you can use what you have around the house. People have been using things like coffee, which I have here, or tea. I've often seen people use steel wool soaked in vinegar, which leaves a beautiful dark color. These are some ways that you can get color in your wood without having to go buy a wood stain. With these legs, I ended up doing several coats because I wanted them quite a bit darker. It's the next morning now and it's time to scrub these up. They've been soaking in vinegar overnight and all I'm going to do is add a little bit of baking soda and a little bit of fresh vinegar and I'm going to scrub them down. In an ideal world, this would take all of the rust off. And honestly, if I'd been able to boil these yesterday in some vinegar and water, it may have removed more rust than it did here. But for me, I'm happy with this. These were very corroded, so expecting them to turn out perfectly is maybe a little unrealistic. These feet caps were particularly bad and I'm going to be using a spray paint on them. Now I have my favorite brands of spray paint. They are a little more expensive so here I'm just using a fairly inexpensive beauty tone metallic spray paint. And just before I spray I'm going to give these a light rub with some 400 grit sandpaper. It'll help smooth out some of the remaining corrosion bumps as well as help the paint to stick. 
One of these cans would last you probably a few dozen projects like this. You could even possibly thrift some cool vases or ornaments and spray those as well to match your furniture if you wanted to. So it's time now to deal with this chunk and I'm going to be using something called Bondo to fix this. One thing that I have to do is make sure the Bondo has something to grip to so that this doesn't get knocked off and I'm using a couple of nails driven into this just below the level that it would be flush with the surface. And what this is going to do, it's going to give that Bondo something to really hold on to and make this repair last a lot longer. Now to try to get this repair as smooth and flat as possible, I'm going to be using a scrap piece of wood that I'm just going to wrap in some tape. Now you can use packing tape, I'm using tuck tape here. It will accomplish the same thing. Basically it's just not going to allow the Bondo to stick to it. I want this to sit right up against the repair because this is going to be partially how I form it. Bondo dries extremely hard, so the more you can do to get the shape you want before it hardens, the better. So I'm just going to clamp this on and I'm going to mix up my Bondo. Now this is automotive body filler. It's a two-part process and I'm opening two cans here because one is nearly empty. This will not harden until you add the hardener to it, which is what is in that little tube. And a little goes a long way. You don't want to use too much of the additive. Mix it up till it's a consistent color and then you have to work really quickly. Usually you only get about five minutes of working time before it starts to harden on you. I'm just going to keep pushing it in, smearing it on it until I'm certain that this void is completely filled. I'm going to roughly shape it with this popsicle stick. You can see it starting to firm up a little bit even as I'm working. And then I'm going to take a clean popsicle stick and push it right up against the side and let that dry up. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and use the Bondo on all of the areas where the edge banding is missing. When I go to paint this, it'll give a much smoother appearance. Whatever sliding doors or panels this had, they are long gone, so I'm going to fill in these grooves as well. Once the Bondo is completely dry, I'm going to remove this form and just use a knife or a blade to kind of trim as much as I can. This stuff is very hard to sand, especially by hand. So the more you can shape it beforehand carefully, the better off you'll be. You'll notice while I'm sanding this that there's a little bit of a wobble. There are some corner blocks on this piece with screws that need to be tightened, so I did address that. And it firms up even more once I put the backboard back on. Here is where I grab my surf prep to save myself a little bit of sanding time. Well, actually a lot of sanding time. <laughs> Bondo is a bummer to sand by hand, but you can do it. I'm also doing this to lightly scuff the surface in preparation for paint. 
Once I have everything smooth the way I want it, I'm using a spray primer to prime this piece. Now you can use any kind of primer you want. Bin is a great primer. It's a little bit pricey. I was trying to keep costs down. Basically, you just want to make sure that those bonded areas are primed with the same product that you have on the rest of the piece so that your paint looks flawless. This is a bit of an interesting shot because you can kind of see the process of how they do this. You've got your primer coat here, your base color, and then your printed wood grain on top of it. And now some really pretty paint. I ended up doing three coats on this piece. I did every surface, inside, out, top side, underside. This really is a beautiful color. Time now to reassemble things. As far as the top coat goes for the legs, that clear spray I used to actually seal the piece before painting was actually a matte top coat. So I'm actually using that on the legs as well to seal them and then adding some fresh felt pads for the feet. Time now to replace these leg brackets, making sure I have them pointed in the right direction. While this back panel is technically clean, this staining does look pretty bad, so I'm going to be brushing some paint on. People ask me all the time if I refinish the back of pieces, and normally I don't because there's usually dates and manufacturing information, but in a case like this, it totally makes sense to paint the back. I know this isn't the crazy, oh my gosh, jaw-dropping <laughs> reveal you guys might be used to, but these pieces get tossed all the time, and with minimal work, you can usually eke at least a few more years out of them. This isn't the type of furniture I normally sell in my business, so I ended up donating it to a local charity for their online auction. I got to share it with you, and the auction made some money. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope you like what I did with this little piece. <laughs>